From the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, this is an ITTV special report. Our next guest has several very cool new products unveiled, new innovations in all kinds of consumer electronics and mobile communications. He is the Vice President of Public Affairs and Communications for LG, John Taylor. Welcome back into tomorrow. How are you? Thanks, Dave. It's been a while since we've been able to get you back on to talk about some of the cool things. And of course, CES always very busy for LG. What are you showing here? Thrilled to be back here. It's a huge show for us. We've actually increased the size of our booth by another third this year. Wow. One of the largest booths on the sh on the flo floor show, and we have everything from smartphones to smart appliances to smart TV. Everything is smart. Everything is smart. <laughs> and you know, we're not focused so much on the technology within, but helping to make these smart devices simple to use. And I'm glad to hear you say that because that's hopefully what makes us as consumers a little smarter, being able to just do what we need to do with all these devices. Absolutely. <laughs> Why well, I brought a little goodie with me. This, okay. this is called the LG Smart TV Upgrader. Whoa. Uh, so this will take any television set that has an HDI, HDMI input, mm -hmm. hook it up to the internet, and this turns it into a smart TV. Uh, it uses the same smart TV platform that we're launching across our product line and over 30 models of LED, LCD, and plasma sets. Yes, yeah, still supporting plasma. Congrats. I'm proud of you for that. We love plasma. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to see the LG plasma right here in your broadcast booth. Been, been talking about that all week as well, so thanks to you guys. Uh, everyone walking by gets to hear and see all the interviews on a beautiful LG set. But so this makes it a smart TV, meaning now I've got access to not only everything online, but perhaps everything in my network and anything I just need to get to? Absolutely. This actually has a built-in web browser, but what makes it really special, it has the LG dashboard, which is a very intuitive approach to putting, uh, to navigating through your content on the screen. There are pr There's preloaded premium content, everything from Netflix and Vudu and Hulu Plus. Nice. And then the entire LG App Store, which will continually be updated. Oh, no doubt. You'll be finding more cool things to share with consumers, and they'll be able to get them and easily download them to the TV, right? Exactly. Or and to the device even. And those who are watching on the video right now at uh, intotomorrow.com will see just how small and cool looking this is with a very nice black finish, and I don't know what you'd call this at the top, but it's neat. It's very <laughs> simple, too. and, and uh, you know, has a very intuitive little remote that goes with it. Mm -hmm. It's coming out in the second quarter, only $149. Very cool. So we can take any TV and make it a smart TV. Absolutely. That's uh, the concept. Uh, yeah. Excellent. The other big theme at the show for us is 3D, of course. Of course. And uh, 2010 was really the launch pad for 3D in the United States, but got off to a relatively s slow start. Mm -hmm because of the lack of content. Right, kind of like um, HD when it first came out. We had the sets, great, but we were clamoring for content. You and I <laughs> talked about that 15, 16 years ago exactly. at this very show. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're at the tipping point now. We expect to see a lot more content in 2011, both on Blu-ray and through satellite and cable. Mm -hmm. uh, but what LG is doing, we're, we have a game changer here. It's called Cinema 3D. Most 3D sets on the market, including many of ours, use active shutter technology, which means the technology for the 3D is in the eyewear. Yeah. Um, which means you got to keep them charged. More importantly, it means they're very expensive, though. Yeah. If you want extra glasses when folks come over and they're going to watch the big game in 3D with you or a movie or whatever, you're spending a lot more money. They range $120 to $150 a pair. Yeah. With Cinema 3D, it uses the same kind of polarized glasses that you have in the movie theater. So light, see, I'm putting on weight. these very lightweight. There's no, again, if you're listening in your car right now, have no fear. <laughs> the video's there for you at intotomorrow.com. But you're going to see how I'm styling now <laughs> with very. these very passive glasses. <laughs> and they're, they're so lightweight that you don't feel you even have them on. And certainly once you get into whatever content you're watching, you forget you have the glasses on. I like them. They're, they're like sunglasses. We've <laughs> done a lot of consumer research, and uh, three to one consumers prefer uh, the, the cinema to 3D approach. Sure, and obviously we'd all prefer no glasses, but we're still a ways away from that, and we have to face that. You know, yeah. we got to realize that we're not there where you can have more than one person even enjoying a 3D without glasses. It's just not quite there. Now, we have a terrific demonstration of what is called auto stereoscopic 3D yeah. in our booth on a 42-inch uh, screen. It's beautiful. Now, it has some limitations. You have to, as a sweet spot right in the middle. Yep. If you're off axis, you really can't see the 3D. 
the beauty of cinema 3D as a very wide viewing angle. True. So if you have you know, your friends and family over to watch that big uh, sporting event in 3D, number one, you can buy the $10 glasses instead of the $100 <laughs> glasses, yep. and you have that wonderful viewing angle. Sure, and of course the glasses are obviously usable again. I mean, they're not cardboard; they're plastic, but they're they're well built enough where you you store them for the next uh, 3D event. Yeah, you can <laughs> you can take them to the theater too. It's the same technology. Good point. Or from the theater. Did I say that? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you forget. You know, you sometimes put them in your pocket on the way out with your popcorn, and, <laughs> and sometimes you forget. So good, promising near-term future for more 3D content. We we believe so. Good. And if it's not games that are that you're into, or if it's not sporting events, or if it's not movies, how about nature shows like Discovery Channel and 3D and stuff like that? So much more content coming our way. And you, you mentioned earlier, John, Blu-ray. Great stuff there. Great stuff there. And if you look at LG's Blu-ray offerings for 2011, both our Blu-ray line and our home theater uh, audio system line based on Blu-ray, 3D across the board, every single model. And uh, the vast majority of them have the smart TV platform built in. Built as well. in, love it. So when you get your new 3G, uh, yeah, 3D LG. That's hard to say. <laughs> when you get your new 3D LG set and your new glasses and all the goodies, don't forget about the Blu-ray player from th from uh, LG as well. Exactly. And it's all there for you at LG.com because life's good. LG.com. John, always a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for joining hey, us here at CES. Thank, thank you so much.